Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? This is another paid request, this time for Edward. Thank you so much, man, for your generosity. And thank you all out there for watching. Uh, for those interested requesting any type of videos, whether it be a topic, reaction, review, re-review, commentary, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is about South Park Season 11, Episodes 8 and 9. One episode I really enjoyed, and one episode I think is the worst so far this season. The episode 8 I really enjoyed, it's the Tourette's episode. It's pretty much, Carmen's in the toy store, he sees his kid swearing, saying shit, dumb shit. And he's like, what? And the mom's like, oh, I'm sorry, my son has Tourette's, and these tits that you can't control... And Carmen's like, wait a minute, so you can say whatever you want and get away with it? And Carmen wants to take advantage of this. And I like the bit as a take on Willy Wonka and singing in the style of one of their songs. You know, I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden twinkle in my eye. I've got a golden ticket. Saying that while well, I can say whatever I want, I could curse. All I, could, all I have to do is say that I got... <laughs> Tourette syndrome. So he's cursing at the principal, he's cursing at the in class, and teachers just have to allow it because it has Tourette's. I do this because Carbon doesn't have it, and Kyle calls him out on it, but then when Kyle curses, he goes to the principal's office. I, I loved uh, how pissed off Kyle would get. I thought that was rather funny. And in fact, Kyle is sent to learn more about Tourette's. And I think it does a decent enough job showcasing people who do have Tourette's and the embarrassment they have, how it's not cool to have this, and how some people have certain tics where, like, they snap their fingers and do something or others. And, you know, one kid talked about how he's sad that he, gets, he embarrasses his family and he embarrasses his parents. And you feel bad for, for them. And of course, Carbon wants to take advantage of this. And then I disappoint that Chris Hansen on Dateline, this is when he had the To Catch a Predator, Carbon calls him because, and then Chris says, yes, hey, you should do something a bit different. Oh, okay, fine, we'll do something different. Because Carbon wants to say the most anti-Semitic stuff about Jewish folks that he wants and can get away with it and go, in fact, when I say it, they'll call me brave. And sort of this kind of taking a peek yet again of how Carmen's mind works. These are the point that he's wearing a robe and he has scotch, but as Kyle says, this is scotch, it's apple juice. And again, I thought it was actually not a bad take on Tourette Syndrome. That gave him a little bit of respect on the difficulties these folks deal with in the real world and reality. And of course, it's understandable that this would be something Carpenter would try to take advantage of. And then again, there's certain bits that made me chuckle. The way Kyle was getting pissed at it. Uh, the way that Carpenter, because he has no filter, now he's saying stuff that he shouldn't be saying. Like, I cry at night because I don't have a dad. Or, I wet my bed. And he's getting steered. I thought the was it Trey Parker who does Cartman? He did a good job capturing the fear in Cartman's voice. You really bought that this kid was scared of going on live TV and getting these secrets out he doesn't want. And of course, this is a fun bit with Butters. I always talk about how much I've enjoyed the character of Butters. And of course, any time Butters has got to go take the lead, he's got to Put his pants all the way down. He's got to have his shirt all the way up. <laughs> Just a very funny visual. I think Carmen admits he did something with his cousin. And Butter's like, you did what with your cousin? <laughs> I did. Anytime you have Butters in there, it's a, it's a nice asterisk. It's a nice extra star, so to speak. Uh, the other bit I enjoyed was that Kyle and this Tourette's kid's plans 
they want to stop the show. Of course, they don't know that Carmen wants the show stopped either. So Kyle and this kid bring all these perverts looking for kids into the same studio and they see Chris Hansen. And as soon as they see Chris Hansen, boom, boom, like this onslaught of people shooting themselves in the head. Because they see Chris Hansen, they know who he is, they know his program, they think they're on, not Dateline, but to catch a predator. And just, boom, boom, just this onslaught of people. And hey, they're, if they're that perverted, they deserve it. Even the ending I thought was kind of funny, where Carmen hugs Kyle. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Kyle's like, what? Yeah, you saved me. You saved me. And then realizing that if they didn't do anything, Carmen would have been completely embarrassed. Him and the kid go, oh, shit. I thought it was a fun episode. I thought it told a pretty decent story they carried through from beginning to end. It was a nice showcase for Carmen. Showing a bit of his steaming side, a bit of his emotional side. Uh, of course, I say this all the time. I could always do for more Butters. I could always do for more of the Butters character. I thought I did a decent enough take on Tourette's. It didn't feel like he was making fun of people who had Tourette's or anything of the sort, which was nice. Really didn't even seem like they did Chris Hansen that dirty compared to other... I mean, I don't. they didn't have him voice the character, but it didn't seem like compared to other familiar people they put on the show, they didn't really treat him that badly. I'm not saying they liked the person, but I've seen other people treat it much worse on the show than what they did with Chris Hansen here, so... Yeah, that was actually a pretty fun episode. And yeah, the music-wise, that take on Willy Wonka... The Golden Ticket. I thought that was pretty funny. They also have this interesting running joke where this kid... I forget the kid's name. Like Each time someone curses and the kid's like... Man, if I could say blah 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 in front of this... Oh, I'd be happy. I'd be so happy. It's kind of weird running joke. Because I forget who the kid was and... It's not that I didn't get the joke. It just kind of one of weird, weird, weird random jokes, like not random but weird running gags throughout the episode. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. If you say so, okay. If you love it that much. Episode nine, I did not like at all. In fact, I would say it's the worst episode I've seen in season eleven. It's trying to be a take on, I think, a, a Fistful of Quarters, which is a documentary on the Donkey Kong world winner. Like, who got the highest score in Donkey Kong? It was like this one guy who was just a regular guy, and then you had the other guy who was like uh, with Billy Mitchell. And I say that vaguely because there's not a lot of Real in depth that you remember Tate's on a fistful of quarters, but I'm just saying if you look up stuff on this episode, they all say that it's based on that. Because the the general piece of the episode is Stan's dad Randy takes a painful crap and it's very big. He wants to show people. And Randy I don't think is that interested of a character I don't think he's that fun of a character to follow. I really don't. The one episode I didn't mind was the Rocky one. And that's more for the Rocky references and the Rocky music. Not so much because of Randy. It's just... You don't have Cartman. You don't have Butters. You don't have Tenny. You don't really have much of Kyle. It's pretty much Stan, Randy... The, the mom, the sister, uh, Bono from U2, Bono, I should say, which they took a dump on saying, uh, from what I read up, it's 
guy feels he's too self-important, something of that na that nature. But anyway, Randy takes a painful crap. It's tries to call world record. They don't want anything to do with this, so they call the European Fecal Standards Institute. They're ready to award him the medal, but then Bono is so mad because he had the award. He had number one, so then he took a bigger one. So then Stan goes to Bono and saying, hey, let my dad have this. Bono threatens Stan. Randy wants to have the record. So he eats at PF Chains more and more. And there's a bit where, kind of like a mom, you know, ultrasound with pregnancy. Here it's someone doing it to Randy and he sees his baby, which is a big turd. And you find out that Bono didn't break the record. Bono is the record because this old scientist took a crap and it was Bono. So pretty much a runabout ray of just saying Bono's a piece of shit. Bono's a piece of shit. He's literally a piece of shit. And Bono is sucked in this old man's nipple. I think called a bitty. Here's the bitty. And Randy at the end takes a big crap. He twirls around and it's bigger than a person. And he wins. And South Park did this because from time to time they go, Emmy Award winner. Like we're an Emmy Award winning show, but we can make it. Look what we could do. We can make an episode that's just toilet humor and take a big crap bigger than a person. And I'm like, okay, uh, bravo, but it wasn't that entertaining to me. Toilet humor, I don't find that funny. Yes, there's always exceptions. But I just didn't find that funny, didn't find that interesting, didn't find that entertaining. Uh, I really still don't get their big beef with Bono. Um, like him as a senior. Maybe he, they know something I don't know, but he didn't seem that bad of a guy compared to other people. Randy, again, I don't think he's that interested of a character. To not have people like Cartman and Butters and such is a detriment. There's really nothing musical-wise I could gravitate towards. There's nothing... Just Randy being obsessed with his record and he's talking like he's never had kids. So, of course, Stan's like, oh, thanks, Dad. I guess if you really like crap, literal crap, or you really hate Bono from U2, Bono, Bono, this is fucking me up. Like Bono, Bono, Boner, Bonefoot, Bonestorm, Boning Cheese, Bone Daddy, Thugs and Harmony, whatever the fuck his name is. Fuck up my brain, I can't think of his goddamn name correctly. Jesus Christ. Bone Thugs and Harmony, I'll just call him. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Boner. B -b -b Boner. Benny and the Jets. Christ. Fucking awful, shitty, fucking dumbass, fucking stupid fucking episode. There, I know, I blew my top. I know, I blew my top. Like the episode 8. Uh, hated episode 9. I would call a piece of shit. Hey, pun intended, piece of shit. It just wasn't that funny. Bravo, you can make an episode full of crap even though you want an Emmy. That's how I feel about it. Okay. Throw for the touchdown. Touchdown, asshole. Good for you. I just see a waste of fucking time. Where it could have been another decent episode like episode 8 was. And this was a waste of fucking time. That's how I see it. But hey, that's just me. <laughs> so, episode 8 was fun. Episode 9... I think sucked the ball sacks. The ball sacks of the bull. And he's pissed. That's why he says bullshit. Mm -hmm.